If, like many others, you'd like to know how to check your four-stroke engine oil level correctly, then keep watching, because over the next few minutes, I'm going to explain. Hello, welcome. I've had quite a few requests asking how to do this. And whilst the information I'm about to give might be common knowledge for some, it's new and important information for others. And so if I was only checking the oil, then the first thing I would make sure of, the vehicle needs parking on a level surface. And that's because we want that oil inside the engine there to be as level as possible in order to get the true reading. Because if it was tilted on its side, as you can see there, we'd get false readings. And then the next thing I'd make sure of is, is that the engine is turned off. And that's because the sump oil at the bottom there of the engine is always being used. We've got the oil pump that's always picking that oil up and taking it to the different parts of the engine. So what we want to achieve is for all the oil to be still and present at the bottom of the sump to take an accurate measurement of how much there is. So my recommendation is always turn the engine off. And another thing to consider is that now the engine stopped, a lot of that oil is now still trapped between all of that piping network and some of those engine components. And so that means that if some of that oil is still trapped up above, it's not going to give a true reading down below in the sump. Then it's going to show that there's less oil in the engine than what actually is. And so now we've got the engine stopped and it's on a flat surface, I now personally recommend to wait around 10 to 15 minutes for that oil to drop down back to the bottom of the sump. And now what we need to do is remove the dipstick and wipe the measuring end with a cloth or a rag. And this is because we need the dipstick to be totally cleaned of any oil before we take the actual measurement. And so when we take the reading, there are two things we need to consider. The first one is to make sure that the dipstick is fully down into its tube with no gaps at the top. And this of course will make sure that the measuring end of the dipstick will protrude into the oil as much as it should do for a correct accurate reading because it's surprising how easy it is to make this mistake. And another thing to consider when taking the reading, if this oil inside the engine is still hot that means it's of a thin viscosity. It won't cling so well to the measuring end of the dipstick. It will be less visible. It will basically be harder to see, so harder to determine the correct level. So this needs to be taken into account and extra vigilance is necessary. We don't have this problem when the engine's cold and the oil is cold because the oil goes thicker and more of it sticks to the end of the dipstick so it can be seen better. Okay, so the dipstick is fully inserted into its tube and then after a moment or two, we'll remove the dipstick and take the reading. We can see that when we look at the end it has two points and it's generally accepted that the oil mark needs to come between these two points. And taking a look at another type of dipstick more common to vehicles. Between these two points there's a crisscross effect instead of the two dots and as with the first dipstick it's generally accepted that the oil level comes up to the middle within this crisscross effect. But as long as the level goes no higher than the upper limit on either or on the lower limit on either, then all should be okay. There shouldn't be any seizures or any damage of the engine. And so now we've taken the reading and we know how much oil is in the sump. If any needs to be added, then it's best to add this in small stages. So we pour a little bit in and then we check the oil. Then pour a little bit more in, then check the oil. But take into account as well, it will take a minute or two for the oil to trickle down from the top of the engine and down into the sump in order to give a good accurate measurement. So let's just finish off by summarizing the points. First, we need to be parked on a level surface. Turn the engine off and then we wait a little while for the oil to drop down and then check the dipstick to see how much oil is actually in the engine. And any oil that needs to be added can be added in small increments whilst checking the oil level in between. Ensure that the dipstick is fully inserted down into its tube to get the correct level. And always be extra vigilant of the oil mark on the dipstick itself to get the right level. And something I'd like to add here as a little disclaimer is consult your owner's service manual that comes with your vehicle before you undertake any work. And the principles of what we've been talking about applies to all types of four-stroke machinery. So it's not just cars, lorries and vans and that sort of thing. It's lawn mowers and four-stroke brush cutters, all types of four-stroke garden machinery. Basically, if the machine has a four-stroke engine, then the principles of what we've been talking about apply. If you have benefited from this video, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done already. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.